Over 50% of all air accidents are caused by the man at the controls. And though you can't prevent many kinds of pilot error, Airbus have designed the A320 to protect itself. This plane, the first A320, is used as a flying test bed to find the limits of what the aircraft can withstand. Because this is a test aircraft, it's full, crammed full, of equipment like this, which tests up to 4,000 parameters every time the aeroplane goes flying. The aeroplane even has its own ballast tanks, so it can change its center of gravity. Having established the aircraft's safe limits, Airbus programmed the computers to stop pilots from going beyond them. However, there's one condition that it hasn't encountered yet, and this could be perhaps its most severe test. Me. Just before we go for the takeoff, Bruce, I'll let you do all the flying here, so even though it's your first time uh, actually flying a, a real Airbus, uh, okay. I will take it. Peter Chandler, the test pilot, must have some kind of death wish. I've never flown anything like this in my life. I'm a Boeing man. My 757 has a control wheel where Airbus have put a place for me steak frites. After all, it is French, and one must have something to eat your dinner off. This little side stick replaces the control wheel I'm used to and all the trim controls. It's a completely different philosophy, a bit more like flying a video game. OK, we're cleared to go. Here we go. And keeping it straight with the rudder pedals. One hundred knots. That's checked. V1, rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear is coming up. Gear up, and this plane's climbing like a French ferret up your trouser leg. Now we've reached a decent altitude, it's time to find out if this plane is as safe and intelligent as they say. So I'm going to test that. I'm going to be unsafe and very stupid. Bruce, what I'd like you to do is just show me what you think is a, the maximum sort of angler bank you would use in, your, in an aeroplane with passengers on board, just to get an idea of where that is in the flight envelope. So... That's about it. All right, so there we go. 20, maybe 25 degrees a bank. Yeah. Normally, I wouldn't bank an airliner beyond 25 degrees. Now, I want to see what happens if I try and roll the plane to the point where we could do structural damage. So what we've got here is a situation where we're going to try and roll the aeroplane absolutely to the maximum amount of bank it can do. And in just a second, you'll see the world from a very different perspective. Here we go. So pitching up. Three and full right stick all the way over. Do this in a conventional airliner and it would go into a beautiful spiral dive until you pulled the wings off. Oh my word! Whack, full side stick. But at 67 degrees a bank on the A320, the computer says, roll no more. If I just release that now, you can see the airplane just rolls me back to wings level. That was good. People pay good money for that, fairgrounds. <laughs> Any pilot can tear his plane apart if he puts his mind to it. But the Airbus has been tested to its limits on this very plane. So the computer prevents a careless, cack-handed or even unconscious pilot from exceeding those limits. What's called the flight envelope. Well, Peter doesn't seem to have lost his nerve yet, and the wings are still intact. So we're going to try one more test, one of the more reckless things you can do in a passenger jet. I'm going to try and stall it. So now what I'm going to do is be a terribly bad pilot. I'm going to close the thrust levers. You could, you could even say mad pilot if you wanted. This plane had better do what it says on the tin, or you'll be reading about me in the morning papers. So, I'm, I'm descending at the moment, uh, about 1,000 feet a minute. I'm descending towards a mountain range, uh, which is not a sensible thing to do under normal circumstances. Peter obviously gets his adrenaline jollies flying the most dangerous manoeuvres low over the Pyrenees. I've got 150 knots, and um, I'm going to take my hand off the thrust, the, the thrust levers. Look, no hands. And I'm still keeping 150 knots, but we're descending 
and at some point I'm going to get a, a, a from the left seat a simulated whoop whoop pull up and at that point I'm going to not touch, touch the thrust levers um, and I'm just going to pull back on the stick an instinctive like ah get me out of here type reaction this would be unbelievably stupid on a normal plane. Of course, the nose would shoot up in the air, but if you don't increase the throttles, it would stall and drop straight onto the mountains below. This is the daftest thing I've done in an airplane for years. OK, so here we go. Fall back stick, panic stations. Blimey! Without me touching the throttles, the flight control computers kick the engines to full thrust. I'm looking at the speed washing off. I'm looking at like all kinds of warnings going off on the thing. I've got towed up, got alpha floor. Looking over my shoulder. Oh my god, look at that attitude. Ah! That's just astounding. That is just really something. We're going up at 5,000 feet a minute. I haven't touched the throttles. I've just left them where they were before. And. If I wiggle the wings slightly and roll left and right, I still have control of this gorgeous bird. That was one hell of a test drive. If ever things did go pear-shaped on me in an aircraft, I think I'd want to be in one of these. Retard. Retard. Well, I may be a Boeing man, but there's only one way to describe that flight. That was absolutely awesome. So what are Airbus going to come up with for them?